Good morning. Good morning. Thank you to everyone for attending this exciting day. It's great to see community, education, and elected leaders in the audience today. I see our members of the school board, Alicia Saunier and Matt Davis. We are ringing in 2023 in the right way, celebrating and advancing community. I've spoken extensively about how I grew up in North City. Uh, I grew up in Walnut Park and my relatives lived in Wells Goodfellow and we would ride our bikes until the street lights came on or ride to the loop or up and down Hodemont, dodging the Hodemont bus without a care in the world. We can't turn back the clock, but we can work together towards a city where everyone can thrive, no matter the color of your skin, how, who you love or how you worship North and South of Del Mar. As I emphasized in my State of the City address, our city cannot succeed if over half of it is left to fail, which is why I'm proud to announce to today that I have signed the Economic Justice Act that was passed to my desk by the Board of Aldermen as part of the city's $150 million commitment to North St. Louis and other disinvested neighborhoods. This act will deliver $93 million in American Rescue Plan funds directly to communities. The first step towards a long process of reversing decades of intentional dis disinvestment to empower, transform, and develop long neglected neighborhoods after decades of disinvestment. With tools to promote home ownership, development, workforce training, and property stabilization, this act will jumpstart the city's work to support neighborhoods and the working families who live in them. Poverty is the father of crime, and families cannot thrive with good paying jobs and good opportunities. Community can't grow when people can no longer afford to live in their homes and are forced to move. It's no secret that the safest neighborhoods have the most resources. We see it, and we feel it, and we live it every day. With the Economic Justice Act, St. Louis is laying the foundation to grow stronger, stable communities, which lift every one of our neighborhoods and make our entire city safe for everyone. While it won't happen overnight, we're working to create change that St. Louisans can see and feel. And the Northside Economic Empowerment Center represents that commitment. Based in the historic Sumner High School, it's a powerful symbol of my administration's dedication to lifting community, promoting innovation, and creating new opportunities through collaboration. The center will provide, the center will prime entrepreneurs and residents with the skills they need to take advantage of new opportunities on the horizon empowering them in their own neighborhoods, a fitting tribute to the Ville's long history as a hub for black professionals and commerce. Black entrepreneurs are fueling a nationwide business boom with a 30% jump in black businesses since 2020 and 25% of St. Louis startups are minority owned. Who knows, maybe the next Annie Malone will drop in at the Northside Economic Empowerment Center to receive the support and training she needs to open her first business. Maybe the next Dave Stewart will open another worldwide technology after receiving training, receiving training right here in the Ville. Today's ribbon cutting is a testament to the center's partners, the Small Business Economic Empowerment Center, Missouri Business Development Agency, MasterCard Digital Doors, and Maryville University, as well as the city, SLDC, SLPS, and the Sumner Advisory Council's ability to come together on exciting new projects. This is what community looks like. I appreciate the hard work of the staff at SLDC, including Neil Richardson, our fearless executive director. Thank you to SLPS leadership, and the St. Louis Board of Education for its import, this important collaboration. And I'm grateful to the St. Louis Board of Aldermen for delivering this historic investment in North City to my desk. Next, I'd like to bring up our fearless director of SLDC, Neil Richardson. Thank you, Mayor Jones. <laughs> and as Mayor Jones spoke to, the Economic Empowerment Center in North City is going to be a moment that lays the foundation for the future of women, minority-owned businesses, 
and small businesses to be able to grow, enter, and scale in their respective industries. Today, as we sit here, has been over a year coming since the mayor has taken office. She's been very thoughtful and strate strategic about her approach to advancing economic justice. It started with the roadmap at the state of the city in April, laying out the three core pillars, economic empowerment, equitable and inclusive development, and neighborhood transformation. Then we culminated and laid the foundation with the rollout of the economic justice action plan at the mayor's business luncheon. This economic justice action plan was about not just another plan, but how do we take actionable steps with resources put behind it to be able to see and feel the impact in these neighborhoods that have been historically marginalized and underserved. And today that hard work, that commitment, that diligence, and that vision that has been laid out by Mayor Jones through the partnership of St. Louis Development Corporation, we sit here today bringing the American Rescue Plan Act dollars that were committed to the city of St. Louis through the Biden administration for us to repair harm, to acknowledge the history of once a great Ville, Ville neighborhood, and then also to ensure that we break down those systems that have historically marginalized low income and people of color, not because they weren't willing, but because they didn't have the access to opportunity. And so now it is our moment in the city of St. Louis, in North St. Louis City, to build back better than we've ever seen before and to create opportunities for everyone to grow, to thrive, and to reach their full economic potential. But we also understand that we cannot achieve that without strategic partnerships. And that's very inclusive of what we have created in partnership with the St. Louis Public School Board. So I would like to welcome the President, Matt Davis, to the stage to give an overview of SLPS and the partnership that we've created through the Economic Empowerment Center. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Mayor Jones. Um, there's a lot of very practical reasons why this partnership makes sense. Uh, this is a great location. This building's in great shape. We have the room. These are great programs uh, that are going to bring opportunities back to the neighborhood. Um, but there's other reasons, historical and, quite frankly, emotional reasons why this partnership makes sense. I always feel that it's imperative that when every St. Louisan should probably come to this neighborhood, stand on the steps of Sumner High School, go up to the library, look out the windows, and look out and see what this neighborhood used to be. Uh, it's, it's emotional to think about the vibrancy and the history of this neighborhood. And at the center of it was this historic institution, Sumner High School, groundbreaking across America. So we can stop and you know, get, can, get, get upset about the history that's happened, about the disinvestment. We can you know, get involved in political fights about who's to blame. But this opportunity is putting all that behind us. How are we going to build this back up? And that's the key of what we do every day, Ms. Sonier and the members of the Board of Education, Dr. Nichols, the principal here, and all of the staff. How do we provide opportunities for our young people? That is our moral imperative. And it's not just us. You know, we can invest in the classrooms, but if we're not investing in our families' communities, it's not going to make a difference. We have lost so many uh, families who have left this city and left these neighborhoods because of all those historical reasons. But now it's uh, such an opportunity that we can take to reinvest and reinvigorate these buildings. And so it's just a great partnership. It's one of probably a thousand more things that we need to be working on, but you gotta start somewhere. And I'm so grateful for Neil and the mayor and, and, and everybody in the city uh, to come together that we can start building this up. So thank you, President Davis. Thank you, Alicia Sanye, Tony Cousins, for your commitment and your support and partnership through this process. Um, also, I want to bring up a partner who has really spearheaded and ensured that Sumner High School stayed a premier institution within the Ville neighborhood. And that's Mr. Aaron Williams, the president of the Sumner Advisory Board.
Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you again for being at the new Northside Economic Empowerment Center. As Neil said, my name is Aaron Williams, the chair of the Sumner Advisory Board. Um, so, wow, right? Um, long time coming to get here. But uh, as the representative of the Sumner Advisory Board, I would like to thank you, Mayor Jones, Neil, the Board of Education, Dr. Adams, who I don't think is here with us today, and Dr. Nichols, for recognizing the value of this institution and also recognizing the value of the ecosystem that we are building here at Sumner High School as a model of how you can reorient the school at the center of our greater society as a center for social well-being and economic power. Now, I'll admit I am a real estate construction professional and a community developer. I never saw myself being one to jump in the conversation about restoring and transforming an uh, educational system. Um, but here I am today, here we all are in all of the discomfort and uncertainty. But we all know that this institution, Sumner High School, is and has always been worth our efforts and our investment. And that is why we're here. Uh, right. Malcolm X once said that education is the passport to the future. Um, and it is those that invest in it today that will lead tomorrow. To contextualize that statement, like I said, I'm a real estate professional. Uh, there is no community to develop. There's no market. There's no real estate. And there's definitely no construction if we don't protect the very foundation of it all, which is the education and well-being of our future generation. Um, and we can't do that alone. We need everyone. And on this site today, there are many who have already stepped forward to do that. We have arts partners who have come in and created new curriculum around design thinking for our students. WashU has opened the Studio Lab Community Design Hub in the lower level of this building as part of the Economic Empowerment Center. UMSL has worked with us to create our very first museum studies program in St. Louis Public Schools. SLU and the Regional Business Council have brought to the school their STL Works mentoring program. Annie Malone has relocated their therapeutic academy in the top level of the main building. And today, we are standing in the new Economic Empowerment Center at Sumner High School. Uh, in a letter to the Post-Dispatch in 1909, Frank Lansford Williams, the second president of Sumner High School, said that on Sunday, when riding down Cottage, his heart swelled with pride at the prestige of the new Sumner High School building as an example of the worth and the rights of black people. He said that they would organize the greatest celebration that black people in St. Louis had ever had to dedicate this building. Let us continue to act in the spirit and honor the legacy of this institution as we open up the doors to the new Economic Empowerment Center at Sumner High School. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. And as I stated before, when Mayor Jones and the Board of Aldermen worked collectively on the Economic Justice Act and also the other appropriations to support the Economic Empowerment Center, we understood that it's not just about bricks and sticks, but it's about hearts and minds. And that's what we're investing into today. And this wouldn't be possible without the staff at SLDC that have come in and create this beautiful space but to also to sustain this long term. SLDC is bringing forth real human capacity to staff this site full time to be able to be a resource for those women, those small, those minority owned businesses that are looking for the support they need to enter, grow and scale in their respective industries. And the leader behind all of that is the director of our minority and women owned business empowerment team. Ms. Stacy 
Fowler. Can you please come to the stage? Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Neil, for that wonderful introduction. Thank you, Mayor Jones. Thank both of you all for entrusting me with this opportunity to bring this Northside Economic Empowerment Center to this community. Um, you know, this has truly been a labor of love, and I feel like I'm giving up having this baby day finally. <laughs> but I have all of these wonderful people around me to bring this together. It, it is not an I, it is a team. And of that team, I have these wonderful managers and these wonderful team members that are helping us make this system, make this, this facility be what it's going to be. And the first person I would like to introduce to you on the team, her name is Nicole Dotson. She is the Northside Economic Empowerment Center. There's Nicole. Uh, the next person who will be helping us with this is uh, Eloise Rowing. She is the administrative assistant who will be helping Nicole with this center. That They are the face of this center. So you will see them when you don't see me. They will be here every day, Monday through Friday, making sure we are helping these businesses, one business at a time, helping the residents, one resident at a time. But it takes more than just them. Then for our MBE WBE program, there is Marla Roach. She is our contract compliance manager. And so she will be working with those individuals as they're working in the community, building these wonderful projects as you see all over the city. And the person that assists her is Eloise, I mean, is Melinda Curry. She is our contract administrator. And I'm sorry, I don't think. Paul, is he, is he there? Oh, look, you got up. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, man. Paul Beckley, he is uh, the director of our BAC, which is our Business Assistance Center. They will be in this center working with us, but they're also in City Hall. So he and his team will be a part of this. And then there is Lennox Lamb. He is our certification manager. So you know certification is done at Lambert Airport, but we have a satellite office here where he will be assisting those businesses and individuals who want to be MBE and WBE certified in this center. So these are the wonderful managers and their teams that will be in this center every day working with this community to make sure we're making a difference in helping those businesses sustain and grow their capacity along with our partners. Now, you heard Aaron talk about partners, but there are more. <laughs> there are more. <laughs> We have the Small Business Empowerment Center with Kevin Wilson. Not sure if he's in the building. We have Todd Gilliard back there from the uh, Minority Business Development Agency. We have MasterCard Digital Doors. I think Deanne is here somewhere. So they're our partner. We also have Maryville University. We have Slate, St. Louis Agency on Training and Employment to work with us to do that workforce side of the house. They have all made commitments to bring those services right here in this center so that residents in this community don't have to go very far to get the things that they need. So with that being said, and moving this program right along, I am going to turn it over to this wonderful MBE, WBE certified, Janetta Hawkins, who owns Personal Touches by Janetta. If you see all these wonderful uh, decorations in this building, so we practice what we preach. So everybody that has helped us get this done today, they are small minority businesses that are certified. She is a small women-owned minority business that, done this, that did all of the decorations for this building. We also have another uh, minority woman who helped us with the video. So we're practicing what we preach. We're making sure that we're putting dollars with those businesses in the community already. So Ms. Janetta, come talk about your experience and how SLDC has assisted you with your business. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name, once again, is Janetta Hawkins. I'm founder, president, and CEO of Personal Touches by Janetta Incorporated. We're located right downtown between 8th and 9th Street, right at the beginning of the Old North neighborhood. What I am not is just a NACE code, a certification, or just a statistic, but a wife, a mother of six, 
a grandmother of 12, a daughter, a sister, an aunt, a friend that wants to create and pass along a solid legacy for the next generations to come. That's what today is all about. Thank you, Mayor Tushara Jones, for your vision for our communities and our small businesses. And thank you, SLDC, for spearheading that vision. And thank you and special congratulations to the Northside Economic Empowerment Center for being the boots on the ground. Now, I know it's been a long time coming, but we're here, and now the real work begins. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream, and his focus was on three main areas. That's racial, political, and economic equality. I, too, have a dream. And in my dream, the old North neighborhood became the northern light for the city of St. Louis. Well, now, <laughs> the children in the neighborhood learn new skills and could creatively express themselves through arts and science and mathematics. The adults were introduced to new industries. They had good jobs with great benefits. I know. The <laughs> residents were able to go to concerts, attend plays, get married, and celebrate their occasions, special occasions. Guess what? They didn't need a bus. They didn't need an Uber. They didn't even need a taxi cab because the state-of-the-art venue is right in our community. That's why I love this administration, because my dream, just like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream, has people like you, the SLDC Economic Empowerment Center, to make sure that small businesses like mine have the resources and the support in order to become not only successful, but remain successful. Our team at Personal Touches by Janetta is committed and willing to roll up our sleeves to make sure that we do our part to make sure that this organization is successful. God bless each and every one of you, and thank you. Put your hands on the grab a scissor. Put your hands on the scissors. All right. One, two, three. <laughs>